your, your son went all the way to Egypt where they had the church bound up. Now they got to hear of somebody singing for the freedom of the Lord. I'm so proud of you, uh, uh, Sylvia Harris. If you're watching today, if you're not, maybe your friends will tell you. But um, you just be all you can be. I don't know. That just, ugh. That song gets me excited. It's like I, when I hear that, singing praises to the king and magnifying his holy name. There's nothing like magnifying God. And I'm so happy to have all of you with us today. And we are going to go into today's lesson. <sighs> y'all been wearing me out this week. Y'all y'all ain't fair. And I'm going to tell you why you ain't fair. Y'all be knowing that it's 4 o'clock. And I, I'm looking up here and y'all be like, yeah, hey, thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Teach it, Dr. Bynum. Ooh, that's blessing me. Y'all know I'm supposed to go off here at 4 o'clock. But y'all be hijacking me. I get hijacked by y'all. But I'm going to tell you, I don't care what I feel like. Um, last night I wasn't feeling my best and it seemed like I'm trying to come down with something. And, and um, I was sick last night and I was sitting in the chair and about four o'clock this morning, I still wasn't asleep. And, um, and uh, both of my assistants was quite concerned about me. And they were it's like, do we need to take you to the hospital? And I said, no, just give me a little while, I'll be all right. And um, she said, well, well, maybe my producer said, well, we'll just play a tape tomorrow. And I, I sat right up in that, did I not? I said, no, uh-uh, the people need what God is doing. I can't do that. And I just, then I knew, I knew that was my sign right there that I'm hooked on y'all. That was my sign that my passion and my praise is for real. What I'm sitting here doing, I, oh, sickness. I was like, no, uh-uh, the, the people need me. They need what I got. They need what God has given me. And I can't call in sick. I can't have no sick day. Not now. Not, not right now. Not right now. I cannot abandon my ship. This ship is sailing the destiny. And we going together. Mm -mm. Ain't going to be nobody going overboard. I'm like Sojourner Truth. I'm going to shoot you. Either you're going to go to freedom or you're going to die right here. That's what she told that slave. You're going to go to freedom or you're going to die right here. But ain't no going back. Ain't no going back. No, we're not going back. We're going to freedom together. We on a journey. We start on a journey and we're going to continue on this journey. And um, it's getting, as my grandmother said, getting good and gooder. Neither, neither. It's getting good and good. It is getting good and good. God is doing some great stuff. And uh, we got some surprises for some people. And I'm going to start this one out early. Um, I had a little thought in mind with Sister Nina. Nina, Nina Moore received a hat yesterday. And um, she got her hat because of her perseverance with her weight. And she stuck with it. And uh, I saw Crystal. I saw Crystal, uh, her, her God sister Crystal, was like, you know, and I'm just going to hang on in here. So I'll be watching the post, right? And y'all know I'm going to keep it 100. So Crystal be like, I'm going to hang on in here. You know, I, I, I fell off the wagon, but I knew you, Nina just pushing me. So I was like, at first I was going to give Nina and Crystal a hat. And then I said, no, Nina had to pull Crystal all the way. I mean, Crystal, you came. But Nina had to help that baby along the way. So Crystal, we're going to send you a cup. But, but, but Nina was guiding that ship. And, and Nina is the one that encouraged you to keep going. And now, Dr. Biden, want to see what you do for the next 21 days. And I'm going to see if you got that thing down in your own spirit to finish losing the weight that you were challenged to lose. And maybe Dr. Biden will dig up another hat for you. But I cannot not reward you for what you have done thus far. So I'm sending you out my very special Happy B-Day Cup. And it's going to be to you, Nina. And you know what? I'm going to write you a little note and then put you a little note in there from me. OK, I love you. I love you. All right, guys, we were talking about today's subject. Um, divine, the power of divine incubation, the power of divine incubation, the power of divine incubation. How do I know? When I am uh, being positioned for divine incubation, I promise you this is going to bless you today. We were talking about the portals on this week, and um, we were talking about 
moving into change and letting go of uh, unforgiveness and the things that we um, deal with from time to time and understanding the power of its gravity on us, understanding the power of its gravity on us. And yesterday, this bears uh, me repeating this, that the temptations and the pulling, the pullings away and the, uh, the presentations that is being presented to the people of God who have uh, embedded faith, like your faith is in your spirit and it's, and it's got a strong hold in your spirit. Those presentations that are being brought to you by the works of the enemy, those are not just presentations so that you can fall in your flesh or you can fall in your character or you can um, end up acting in a manner that is immoral to the standards of Christianity. It's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. It is the enemy trying to pervert your faith. It is the enemy trying to pull you from faith in God to faith out of God. Because faith is a gift. It's given to you. It's given to you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so since we are born again, we have been given the gift of faith. And what we do as we mature in God, we allow that faith to mature so that it can now produce what God has called it to produce. When the enemy knows that you are on the verge of producing that, then his job is to pervert that faith. His job is to pervert your belief system because you are a strong believer. And we don't need to go into all of that. Watch yesterday's program. And some of you all, I saw your comments and you were laughing hysterically. Yes, because we know how to believe. Everything that we have done, even the fact that the length of time that it took some of us to accept Christ as our personal savior, it took us that long because we we have an innate ability to believe something and to hold on to what we believe. And so I don't care how many messages you was hearing and people was preaching, your mom was praying for you, your grandma was putting oil on you, you, go, you was going to still go out there and smoke weed and you was going to still hang out with Ray Ray because that's what you believed. And because you believed that, you were able to hold on to that. Watch this. Until God's timing came for your life, then the Lord broke the power of perversion off of you and he caused you now to believe him to take that same belief and come after him because the porter and the door for you to exit out and enter in was at hand and so now what is going on in the kingdom of darkness he hates that he hates that because he already know you he already know Emma. He already know that if this person believes anything, they're going to stick to what they believe. Are you hearing that? And so he never stops coming after people like that. He never stops coming after people that he know uh, have a strong belief system. People that believe God are not weak people. You're not weak people. We're not, we're not, we're, we're not, we're not sloppy agape people. It takes strength. To believe God. So then when you're looking at this. He's after your belief to pervert it. To turn it around. To pull it back. You don't lose it. You don't lose it. You don't lose it. You don't lose faith. You just pervert that faith. And start believing something else. Good Lord have mercy. Like the lie that the enemy tells. God's already prophesied truth to you. And the enemy's job is. Is to make you to offer you an alternative thought, an alternative trust level, and make you now start believing the lie. And when you start believing the lie, now your behavior begin to exemplify your belief. Did I just say something right there? Is God talking right there? I don't care what we say out of my I believe God, your behavior is what determines your true belief. Well, I trust the Lord. Your behavior in the time of trouble 
in the time of distress, your behavior determines whether or not you really believe God. Good Lord have mercy. Are y'all hearing that? So, when it's my behavior that determines whether or not I believe God, watch this people, watch this. And we now know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the portals are gateways and they are avenues and they are passageways in and out of one realm to the next. And we understand that by understanding when Jacob was there laying down and the angels begin to ascend and descend and they were able to keep going up and down because there was a portal. There was a passageway. There was a gateway. There was a door being held open. Now watch this. They were listen to the simplicity of this. They were able to go up because there was a door held open a passageway. They were able to come down because there was a door and a passageway. So what am I saying? It is movement. It is movement towards an assignment that keeps the portal and the gateway open. If the angels had have just came down and their assignment was just to stay down there with Jacob throughout the fulfillment of his life, then the portal would have closed. But when there is activity that is in the plan of God and God's plan is that there be divine movement, then the portal has to stay open as long as you keep moving. God just said something right there. As long as you refuse to stand still, there is always going to be a divine connection in the God world for you. And there will be no interruptions and no hindrances as long as you keep moving. Are you hearing that? Are you hearing that? The angels of the Lord were sent to give a message, but they were also taking a message. And so then there's this transition that's going up and down on behalf of Jacob. Because in his spirit, he's deciding to move from where he is. In his spirit, watch this, he's being confronted with his old nature and he's being introduced to his new nature. God just said something right there. The movement is necessary in the portal, not just for houses and cars and businesses and money, but the, listen, the movement in the portal is necessary because it is constantly introducing you, watch this, to your new self while it's helping you to exit your old self. And because, watch this, there was a divine presence that is involved and intertwined whenever there's a portal that has been guaranteed to be open over a person's life whom the Lord has chosen because of that atmosphere and because of that, 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 that realm, there was a spirit of purification that harbors around you when the Lord taps you on your shoulder and said, it's your turn. Everybody that's on this page, everybody that's watching, there was a spirit a purification that harbors around you. And you said, but Dr. Biden, how do I know that the purification is there? Because your level of the conviction will begin to increase. What you used to do and get away with it, you will feel agitated about it. I don't, I don't care down to the least little thing. If you say something to somebody wrong, you'd be like, oh, I shouldn't have said that like that to that cashier. You know why? Because you are in the process of God delivering unto you what he has promised. But in order for God to deliver to you what he has promised, he has to now introduce you to your own nature and make you confront, make you confront those things that cannot go with you to the next level. God is already teaching up in here. He already teaching up in here. Are you hearing the Lord? Are you hearing God today? So it says here, then what is happening? What is going on with you? When there's a portal that has been opened with your name on it, what is God causing to happen? What is going on with you is that the Lord now have brought you to a place where you are now experiencing what we call prophetic activation. It's prophetic activation, prophetic activation, which means I'm not completely there. 
I'm not all that God wants me to be. Watch this. Ooh, this is so good. This is so good. This is so good. I'm talking to some people. I mean, I got a message yesterday from, 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 from Miko said, people are just inboxing me and emailing me like crazy saying, show me how to live right. Because we see your life is changing. How do I live right? Listen to this. Listen to this. Prophetic activation comes to the lives of people who you don't have it all together and every dot may not be there and every T may not be crossed, but prophetic activation goes into play when you are an individual that is moving in the divine place of God with a desire to be in the will of God and a desire to do the will of God, then prophetic activation when you get stuck, because there is times when you get stuck. Am I tapping anybody right now? There were times when you're moving well. The Bible said, you know, you did want well. Who hindered you? There was times when you're moving well and you're moving in the things of God. And, 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 it, and it seems like everything is, is going full sail. And then you hit a bump in the road and you feel like you're stuck. And you feel like you can't shake yourself out of that place. And you feel like you're in a desert place. Well, all of a sudden, you don't feel like listening to worship music. And you don't feel like going to church. And you don't feel like hearing no preaching. And you just don't want to hear nothing. You just want to get up on Sunday morning and go to the park. And just have a picnic. And act like it ain't even Sunday. Act like it ain't even Bible study night. You just want to go to the movies. I just Because in that process... There's a process when as you are moving on the journey, if you're not consistently asking the Lord for his strength, you can't run on being high about what you know God is going to do. Because high runs out of strength. High runs out of hype. High don't, don't listen, high don't have the longevity to take you to the end. But the word of God does. And that's why we can't get moving in the things of God and forget to stay in contact with God consistently asking the Lord for his strength, asking the Lord for the power of movement. There's a reason why the scripture is placed in the Bible that said in him we move and live and have our being. And so if we don't stay in the Christ, listen to this, if we don't stay in the Christ, the one that heaven and earth lines up in, the one where heaven sends down the message and the earth gravitates to what has been prophesied and the one that sits in us that have the ability to deliver what God has said about us into the earth realm and present us to the nations as the messengers of God. Are you hearing me? If we don't stay in contact with that person, then we will constantly be high but never finishing. And we will be like crackheads who've never been delivered from an addiction. Do you not know that there are people in the body of Christ that are addicted? There are people that are under the spirit of addiction. The activity that enemy is shrewd, y'all. He's shrewd. No, you're not, you're not addicted to cigarettes and you're not addicted to, you know, to, to alcohol or you're not addicted to, you know, to, to weed or you're not addicted to heroin, but you carry the traits of a person that operates under the spirit and the spell of addiction. And the spell of addiction is you always got to get high. You always want somebody to give you a hit. Are you hearing me? You always need, oh, put it in my veins. Instead of being able to walk consistently and even toned in God, moving through life, sure footed. We always go to these highs. And then when we get to the slump or the low, it hit me again. And you got to be careful of that kind of activity. You got to be careful of that kind of activity. And it's times like this. When you hit those kind of slumps, God doesn't send prophetic activation to give you a high, like a hit in your veins. He sends prophetic up, uh, activation to give you a speed shot out of that dead place and put you back on course with the intention for you to stay on course. And the way you're going to stay on course, you got to stay in him. Oh, he preaching something today. He preaching something today. So all of this in and out Christianity is not going to work. All of this, sometimes I pray, sometimes I don't. That's not going to work, people. And sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I read my Bible, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I pray, worship, sometimes I don't. Listen to what he said. When that happens, this is why the Lord has me sitting here. 
He has me sitting here because it is predestined that you not miss the promise. And God is not going to let you miss the promise. So then he sends prophetic activation, which is the ability to hear and see and discern and communicate in the spirit. What God is saying about an individual's life, it is when the Lord uses somebody and not necessarily the person have to be a prophet, but it is when the Lord provokes an assignment in the spirit of another individual and they are sent to activate your hearing, to activate what you see, to reactivate your discernment so that you now have proper judgment. Are you hearing that? Are you hearing that? Oh, the enemy don't like this. He don't like this. Oh, God, he don't like this. Uh-huh, he let the phone ring. Everybody didn't know me. No, don't call me. So that can't be nobody that really know me because they, if they did, they knew I was on this telecast right here. Do you hear what God is saying? That was a, that, that right there, that was an interruption because the devil said, don't tell them that. Uh-uh, okay, wait a minute. Now we're going to have to ring the phone right here. Touch somebody on the shoulder and say, dial that number. Dial that number. Because you know what? We don't want them to know this. We don't want them to know this. That right now, as I speak, your spirit man is waking up. Right now, while the Lord is using me to sit here, your eyes are coming open. Your ears are being unstopped. Your discernment is coming back. And what is discernment? To be able to judge a thing. Without having natural facts, but having a sense that you are headed in the right direction from a divine place. That's what discernment is. It's being able to judge things properly. Are you hearing God today? It says here, how do I know that this works? Because this was the same thing that happened to Timothy. Paul was not classified as a prophet, but the Lord set him. To activate Timothy by the laying on of hands and by the reminding him of what was put in him when he was laid hands on by his grandmother. Are you hearing God today? This is for you to be reminded, not for me to just, not for me to give you something because you already got it. You already got spiritual eyes. You just need some glasses. You already can hear. Your hearing just to need, need to be provoked to wake up. You already have discernment. And so what God does is he sends an individual so that you can be prophetically activated. What is prophetically activated? You can be activated when you walk a certain way in God. You can be activated when you live a certain way in God. But then when you hit the bump in the road, you need a prophetic activation. And what is a prophetic activation? It is a, a provoking that come from the spirit of God that you did not earn. You did not live right to get that. It was the mercy of God that said, come back here and get on track. You, I'm talking to you, get back over here in your place. And so the prophetic activation becomes a gift from God. And that's why the praise and the worship that is on this telecast for many of you that are watching, that's why it ought to be at an all-time high because we miss it on a daily basis. But the grace of God comes and gives us prophetic activation because God is determined now that the word that I have spoken over your life, it would not return unto me void, but it will prosper in the thing whereto I send it. The word is in you. It's in you, but God has to send prophetic activation to wake it up so you can recognize that you're not in a struggle. You're in a transition and the devil is trying to pervert your trust and your faith. But God has determined this day, this very day right here, that the enemy's works will not succeed over your life. Because God has determined that when you can't see your way, when you can't hear him, when you can't discern, he's going to send prophetic activation activation and wake you up who am I preaching to today my God I feel the Holy Ghost on that no it's already in you 
It's already in you from some of your grandmothers. It's already in you from some of your grandfathers. It's in some of you from your parents, from your aunts, from your uncles, from your spiritual mothers and your spiritual fathers who birthed you out in the spirit. And the devil is alive when he thinks he's going to cause you to get to the point where the world is being introduced to everything and you're going to choose an alternative. There is no alternative. This is your route. This is your way. I don't care what anybody else do, but if you own this telecast today, your way is a straight way. Your way is a holy way. Your way is a righteous way. And no other way will work for you because that's been predestined for your life. And when God gets ready, he'll do you just like he did Jacob. He'll lay your big head down and cause heaven to open up and send you messengers and have you to confront what it is that is trying to swallow up what God has said. Who am I preaching to? No, the devil got to vomit it up. He got to vomit back up the prophecy. No, you trying to swallow it, but you can't. Just like when Jonah was swallowed, when the season came and the right time came. Are you hearing God today? Because my God, I feel this thing. I feel this thing today. I feel this thing today. What am I saying? What am I saying? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Who, who on this page today know that God has sending prophetic activation? And that's what some of you can feel yourself now. You feel like, whew, I'm coming back to myself. Whoa, I feel my strength coming. Oh, Jesus, I just feel like God is really, oh, Lord, Jesus, I can feel the Lord. You know, you feel like, okay, now people, people have emailed me and said, Dr. Bonham, I was just walking like a zombie. I, I, I was walking like a zombie, but since I've been listening to at three with me, it feel like I'm on fire for God again. It feel like I want to witness again. It feel like I just want to just go and conquer the world. One girl said, I feel like I, when I get off at three with me, I can do anything. I just feel like I'm just a giant because you know why you feel that way? Because it's already in you. It's the works of the enemy that comes to try to choke it, that try to smother it, that try to make you think you done lost it. You ain't lost nothing. It just got to be woke up. Are you hearing me? My God is talking. Watch this. So when he says that when times of prophetic activation comes, listen, 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 listen. Please, 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 please listen to this. Please listen to this. This right here, God is just downloading this to me right now. Right now I'm hearing him. I'm hearing him. God, I thank you. God, I thank you for this. I thank you for that thing just hit me. Ooh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He just said, he just said prophetic, prophetic activation would not just cause natural movement because people always want to determine that they are succeeding based on what they can see on the outside. But he said prophetic, true prophetic activation is determined when you see a person experiencing prophetic incubation. And prophetic incubation is a term that describes the season of separation, my God from Zion, prophetic incubation is a season that after you've been incubated, after you've been activated, you can't just run right out. You got to be still and go through the process of prophetic incubation and prophetic incubation is a season where you have to be separated and it often, watch this, often held in isolation. This is the time when friends won't understand. This is the time when you have to be by yourself. This is the time when you have to just get off by yourself. This is the time when you have to do foreign things that's even unfamiliar to you. Are you hearing God today? It says prophetic incubation is a time of isolation whereby divine messengers are groomed by God who has been called to service and to be sent out. 
This is when you are reactivated and upon activation, now you are incubated so that you can now be prepared from a divine place, which means the word that I must receive in this time of incubation, it must be divine. It must come from the presence of the Lord. It must come from God speaking to me himself. It must come from God now refamiliarizing my spirit with his voice so that I can and learn to hear from him when you can't find nobody to prophesy to you this is a season that God reintroduces you to his voice are you hearing God today my God is anybody hearing God today oh my God my God my God my God my God y'all 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 watch this watch this watch this watch this watch this prophetic incubation is when the spirit of the person is awakened from a deep place and everything that had been lying dormant. Lord Jesus, I just saw this in the spirit. I'm telling y'all, I'm going through some changes in here today. Whew. Look at this. Look at, look at what I just saw in the spirit. You know, when you go, if you a mother or you a aunt or you a grandmother or you a grandfather, or you a uncle. And let's just say you're a father and you babysitting your child or you babysitting your niece or your grandchild. And let's just say they like four years old, three years old and you getting ready to go to church and they laid down on the couch and they fell asleep. And when you go and you wake them up, thank you, Jesus. When you go and wake them up, what child jumps up off the couch and say, all right, grandma, I'm ready to go. No, when you waking them up, they got to stretch. When you wake them up, they got to get their vision clear to see, oh, this is grandma. This is not the boogeyman. And when you waking them up, they got to get their shoes on. And sometimes you can say, come on here, bookie. We got to go. And it seems like they, they kind of disoriented and they get in their little shoes on. And then they got to stretch and yawn. And then they start wiping their eyes out. You don't grab that child and snatch them and just stop running out the door and expect for them to walk. You got to wait till every faculty about them is aware that you're being woke up and we getting ready to go to church. Or we getting ready to go to Walmart. It's the same thing with prophetic incubation. When God wakes you up, you can't just jump up and start running and doing everything. You got to let every part of you, my hearing got to now wake up my vision got to wake up my spirit my faith my hope my joy my peace everything that makes up the fibers of who I am the new me that's about to I got to get introduced to the new me I got to figure out now what does this new me look like and what does this new me sound like and who is this new me supposed to relate to and all the things these these things happen while you are in spiritual incubation and if you rush that process you're going to run into a part of you that is is not woke yet and you're going to be deceived by the first thing that you see and that's why you got to wait on the Lord that's why you got to wait in his presence that's why you got to give God the time to wake you up to let you go through that process of incubation are you hearing me good Lord have mercy God I hear you I hear you I hear you I hear you and that's why incubation took place Watch this. That's why incubation took place. How do I know what I'm talking about? Because I know what I'm talking about. Because God done said that thing and I done walked through that thing. And I know exactly what I am talking about. Incubation. Incubation took place in caves. Do y'all remember David? The cave of Abdullam. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? God had to isolate him and put him up. Do you know? Do you remember John on the Isle of Patmos? Come on here, somebody. Y'all better come on here and help me preach. Yes, Lord Jesus. Do you remember those times? Do you remember Samson when he went through that time and God had to put him in divine prophetic incubation? He didn't get his eyes back, up, but he got his insight back. He didn't get his eyesight back. But guess what? When he lost his eyes and he was in there in incubation, he was able to determine what was really real eyes and what was a limited eyes. And he said, God, that I may avenge myself for my eyes not that he wanted to see in the natural but he wanted to see enough to complete his purpose so he didn't get his eyesight back but he got his insight back and he was still able to fulfill destiny but he had to go in divine prophetic incubation he had to be isolated are y'all hearing the Lord today 
is anybody listening to what God is saying. It is necessary. It is necessary. Incubation happens in caves. Incubation happens underground. Incubation happens in, in isolated dwelling places. And sometimes incubation causes you to be sent into the wilderness like it did Nebuchadnezzar. He had to send him out into the wilderness until he came to himself and said only you are God and without you I can do nothing and that's what the power of incubation is designed for it's designed to reconnect you with your creator and it's designed to reconnect your mind until it brings you to the point where you say without God I can do nothing without him I would fail good Lord have mercy y'all I got to go Ooh, Jesus. I, when I tell you I feel the Holy Ghost in here today, I, do, 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 do anybody can get Do you not know? Do you not know? Here's two kids. Thank you, Jesus. Do you not know? Do you not know that the people, you could tell the people, you could tell the people that have gone through prophetic activation. You could tell the people that have gone through the process and is still going through the process of, 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 of prophetic incubation because they don't fall for dumbness. Because they don't need to get in every prayer line that they see. They don't need to run the meetings talking about I need somebody to prophesy to me. Those people are able to hear from God for themselves. They're the kind of people that when you bring a word to them, when people say, Dr. the bottom, I got a word for you. I look them right in their eyes. Because if you give me a word and it ain't God, I'm going to tell you I don't receive that. When you've been through divine incubation, your spirit is no longer susceptible to foolishness. You're no longer susceptible. To, 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 to all this manipulation that's going on called a prophet uh, the, this is the prophetic no you're able to see truth because you've lived in an incubated state with a divine voice and when you come out of that place with God you know what's God and what's not oh God he's saying something right now are you hearing this good Lord I gotta go I gotta go I gotta go I gotta go, I gotta go. my time is done Scripture Can't leave you without a word Scripture Isaiah 41 Isaiah 41 uh, Listen in silence before me O islands and regions And bordering on the sea And let the people Gather and renew Their strength For the argument let them offer their strongest arguments. Let them come near. Let, then let them speak. Let us come near together for judgment and decide the point at issue between us concerning the enemy advancing the east. Who has roused one Cyrus from the east? Who has woken up and aroused the spirit of God? Whom he calls in righteousness to his services and whom victory meets at every step. Did y'all? Ooh, Jesus. Who done, who done cause God to be activated to a point that victory meets at every step? Do you hear? Ah! Who wouldn't live saved? Who wouldn't want to serve a God like this? The next person to tell me the Bible ain't real, I'm liable to punch you. Okay. I'm telling you because if it's fake, it's got me. <laughs> Listen. It, say, it's, it, it says, uh, who? Home, home victory meets at every step. He, the Lord, subdues nations before him and makes him ruler over kings. He turns them to dust with the sword of Cyrus and to driven straw and shaft with his bow. He, Cyrus, pursues them and passes safely and unhindered even by a way his feet had not trod and so swiftly that his feet do not touch the ground. In other words, when you in this state with God, it's showing you God's ability to maneuver in the midst of chaos and in the midst of the enemy and get you through circumstances and take you by way of a route that you ain't never walked before to the point that you don't even need the ground to get there. Y'all better not play with God today.
You just better not play with God today. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. The place that God has got you right now, you don't need the ground to get there. You don't need the ground to get there. L listen, he, he, he said, he, listen, listen, listen. Who, who has prepared and done this? Who has prepared and done this? Calling forth and guiding the destinies of the generations of the nations from the beginning. It's I, the Lord, the first existing before history be began. And with the last and ever present unchanging God, I am he.